Good morning, guys. I thought about something probably overnight in a dream because my brain never stops working. And since the July, I believe it was June or July watchtower, maybe even prior to that, And if you look ahead to the next watchtowers, they're really, really, really grooming the rank and file for persecution. Now, there's a scripture. I think it's Psalms 17, 18. I don't know. It's in Psalms. And it says that, you know, whoever hears their story first whoever gives their story first sounds right until they're cross-examined. Now, when Jehovah's Witnesses say, or when the governing body says, only look on JW.org. If it's not JW.org, it's not true. Um, Put the fear of God in people about... Um, apostates and like socially execute you for questioning things too much. They're not only getting their story out first, but they're effectively putting the kibosh on that cross-examination. They don't want it to happen. This is all done by design. But even if you only look at their messages, they are sending a really weird mixed message. For one, go bags. Absolutely hysterical. Like, you have no idea how long the Great Tribulation is supposed to last. And it's not even how long the Great Tribulation is supposed to last. Like, all of false religion is supposed to be destroyed first. I think I remember reading an article that Watchtower put out recently that, you know, they're all going to be kind of, like, jealous. You know, we can't say that the people will be destroyed, but their organizations will be destroyed. And they're going to be wondering how in the world we got by that. (laughs) But... Then they're going to come after, like, all the false false religion is going to be destroyed first. But they're preparing people now for persecution. And they have go bags for the great tribulation. And how long is the great tribulation supposed to last? Is a go bag really going to do you a whole lot of good? Like, if you have a handful of canned goods and stuff like that. I mean, are we packing for a lunch? Do we have to be prepared for, like, six months worth of... Because, you know, the minimum this fellowshipping time is six months to prove your repentance. Is it? Are we talking, like, six months to, like, put the fear of God into the rest of humanity about things before Armageddon strikes and the final... Whatever. Like, how long is the Great Tribulation? Is there really a benefit to having a go-bag... And if you have God's protection on everything because you were the only true religion, is it really necessary to have a go bag? Wouldn't there be a benefit to having a skill to, you know, have a continuous food supply? Like, there's people that were farmers as Jehovah's Witnesses that gave up their their land and their property and their their independence basically to make more time to preach like if if we're so focused on preaching who's feeding us I don't just a question I don't know like we have our own little mini homestead and I feel like We could get by if we needed to. We're not going to be happy about it, not being able to just run up to the grocery store, but hooray, we're not going to starve to death. How 
long are these go bags going to hold people over? If you picked up a little farming hobby in your backyard, like one of those quarter acre farming things, how many people are going to say that, you know, you're not spiritual enough when you've got things that need to happen on your farm and you don't have a consistent amount of field service time? I know I was personally discouraged from having, having hobbies. Um, I was personally discouraged from having a full-time job as a teenager because I was still living at home and going to school for like maybe two classes a semester. I wasn't dedicated enough. So if you've got a full-time job and you're also taking care of your little homestead that you're planning on feeding you through the Great Tribulation because you have the full awareness that a go-bag is a complete and total crackpot. Oh, my God. Like, these people are just bizarre. And not only that. They're preparing for, they're preparing them for persecution. They're getting it in their mind that this is all about persecution. And they even publish in their articles, it's because you're being persecuted for your love for Jehovah's organization and Jesus Christ. No, there's other people that are being persecuted for their, for their faith. You're being prosecuted. For your crimes against humanity. Who in their right mind would expect a child to have two witnesses to being molested? Who in their right mind would say, you can be disfellowshipped and shunned for having Christmas decorations out? When you're going to leave a known child abuser in Jehovah's hands, but you're protecting the congregation. What the heck are you thinking? You're not being persecuted. You're being prosecuted. There's a difference. But they're putting it in your head that none of these things that you're being prosecuted for is true and therefore since you're not allowed to look anywhere else you're being persecuted but being persecuted is only in your mind because you have major information control going on crimes against humanity can you leave Jehovah's Witnesses and not be subject to their rules without consequence like if you fade out you haven't been around in five years and there's a brother out in service or something that sees you got Christmas lights up would they not be questioning you and asking have you disassociated I think by putting Christmas lights up that's an act of worship so you've disassociated if you don't come to a judicial committee meeting we're just going to assume that you've done this and we're going to announce you anyway. There's plenty of stories like that. Don't tell me it's not true. You don't know if it's not true or not because you're not allowed to look. Go look before you tell me it's not true. And if you're afraid to look, don't tell me that you don't have information to control. Or if you refuse to look. If you refuse to look, don't tell me you don't have information control. If you're not willing to look at the evidence, don't tell me it's not true. And then for simple things, don't tell me it's just serious sin that you get disfellowshipped for. Because I don't even know what I did. There is another person on YouTube who was disfellowshipped because they had migraines that caused basically a weird processing of light and it it made the light and the colors around an object kind of have an aura and I've had migraines before where my vision looked like a kaleidoscope I know this to be true don't tell me I did not experience what I experienced it was not demonic it was not demonic worship it was not spiritistic I was not being unfaithful 
it was a freaky migraine and this other woman was disfellowshipped over a freaking migraine. There was an individual that I know of. Her father was abusive. Her stepmother was abusive. If she would have been baptized, she probably would have been disfellowshipped because she was a struggling, disturbed, and defiant child because of abuse. And the same elder that disfellowshipped me for being kind of a defiant teenager, disfellowshipped her, would have disfellowshipped her too, because you could have, if you would have seen the looks that he gave her, if looks could kill, but he knew what her situation was, and he was one that decided not to report the abuse, even though they admitted to it because this woman knew too many people and they might put Jehovah's name, Jehovah's organization in hot water. Guess what? Now this victim has a one year window in New York where her case can be heard. They can pull those records again. And the evidence will be out there, but like I said before, if you're not willing to look at the evidence, don't tell me it's not true. This organization has crimes against humanity. What other place on earth, what other loving organization thinks that what a psychologist calls a social execution because it causes suicide. A loving discipline. Now I took a standards into statistics class. I know a little bit about what I'm doing. And I did my own little study on a group of probably 37,000 people and found the suicide rate among disfellowshipped and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, mostly disfellowshipped and disassociated because they've lost their families, to be four times higher than the national average in the United States and five times higher than the worldwide suicide rate. Okay, so there's a difference between putting your kid in time out and whipping them with an extension cord until they die. One you could call it loving. The other one you could call abuse. I've already tried it. Tried discussing suicidal tendencies with an elder. And you know what? His suggestion was, you know, go back to the meetings and do this and do that. And in so many months, it could be as little as three months. But I don't know your situation and I don't know your elders because... <laughs> it depends on your elders too. There's no spirit directing these people. Okay? If someone is suicidal, they're already at the end of their rope. Okay? There's no go back to the meetings for six months. And then we can help you. But they don't care. That's the only advice that he had. That besides, you know, so-and-so had it harder in the Bible and they were okay. Really? Really? That's the best that you've got for me? I 
man, it was embarrassing how I poured my heart out on the phone. So if they have somebody who's a little bit more stoic because they've just had it to the point where they've kind of disassociated and this world isn't even real anymore. They just know that they're suffering and they want out. And this is the answers that they get. Because that's the loving thing. It's no freaking wonder why they have such a high suicide rate. But that's loving. You really want to call that loving? This is crimes against humanity. This is crimes against cu- against abuse against children. But crimes that are abuse against children. Like... You're not being persecuted. You're being prosecuted. There's a difference. Rant over. I need to go to work. 